Sam Hendrick here again from Bentley Systems to continue in the third video in the series of, for the Import Points VBA. Now behind me is the webpage where you could go and get it. There'll be a link down below where you can download it. Check with your CAD support people. Make sure they're cool with it. Now in this one, what we're going to talk about is how to use CSV data to import and place cells along with text in our file. So that's what this video is going to be about. Let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we're going to see how we can use the import points VBA to import data. We're going to also use the culvert data we've used in prior videos. We're going to place a cell and then we're also going to include three pieces of visible text and two pieces of invisible text. So let's look at our Excel spreadsheet. This is our starting point. Now I have colored some of the columns, these green columns. I want that text to be visible and the yellow ones, the latitude and longitude, I want those to be added, but not visible. Now the coloration has nothing to do with it. I'm just coloring them so that you can see which columns we plan to bring over and make visible and which ones we're going to make invisible. Now this needs to be exported out as a CSV file. This is an Excel spreadsheet. So we would just do a save as and save it as a CSV. That's what the VBA wants to have as a CSV file. So I'm going to go to my utilities tab up here. I'm going to go to the VBA manager because again, I have loaded my VBA in the correct location. I've got this available to me. There's my import points. I want to go ahead and load it, close the VBA projects dialog on the import points dialog in the upper left corner. This is where you select the source file. I'm going to click on that button. Now I've already done this, so I can just get this from my history list. If you needed to navigate to find yours, you would just navigate going on to different drives or folders. I'm going to click open. You can see on the left-hand side, there are all my columns. Now it's always recommended that in your Excel spreadsheet, ultimately your CSV, that your header row, the first row, that you label it so that as you import it, you know what the column data is. So I know this is county, this is route, this is post mile, and so on. You don't have to technically, but then you would only see the first row of data and it may not be obvious what it is. So now that we've got that loaded in, we choose our output two. And as I mentioned, we're going to be doing cell plus fields. Second to the last option down here. We need to choose a cell that we want to load in. So I'm going to click the button, select cell. Now the cell library that I'm using is the one that comes with the VBA. There's three files. When you download the zip file, there's the VBA. There's a DGN lib, which contains cells, which you can use to test it with. And then there's also a PDF for documentation. Now in this cell library, there's one that I've modified. It's the dot plus three text lines. I made the text to 20 feet. So I actually copied the cell in the cell library and made changes to it. So you see an example of it right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the select cell and continue. Now you see the fields available here. Now you may think, well, there was only three. What are the additional ones? Those are going to be the ones I'm going to add in the Latin long, but they're not going to be visible. To map these columns here to these items to the right, if they're named the same, which not all of ours are, you can easily click the button down here. It says click here to automatically map fields. I'm going to click that. It was able to map two of the fields correctly, but elevation, it didn't get that. To remove that, I just double click and it goes away. Now I need to add over the columns and assign them to the letters over here. So feature type, I'm going to make A. Post mile, I'm going to make that B. Culvert type, I'm going to make that C. Those three will be shown. The two that won't be shown, I'm going to drag down longitude and I'm going to drag down latitude. I need to check to make sure that I'm using longitude latitude, which I know I am, but if you saw X and Y, you need to click here. You need to make sure that you've checked the box if you're using latitude longitude. Also, there's a checkbox. Input file has header row, which ours did. Again, it's always recommended you do that. So we don't need to change anything because we are all set. We're just going to click done. At this point, I'm ready to go. I'm just going to click the place button in the bottom right corner. Give it a moment. You'll see the cells in the text appear. I'm going to zoom in. 
you can see there's my text and you might not be able to see it very well, but there's a little red dot. That's my cell. And this is the text that came along with it. Now, if I get the properties on this, press and hold the right button, context menu at the bottom, properties. On my properties here, I go to the circle, you go to items, I go to fields. There's that information. A, B, C will be visible, but D and E, those aren't showing right now, but they're there. So I'm going to close that. Now, the reason I added in the longitude latitude was if I asked MicroStation where that cell was placed, it would tell me an X and a Y location, easting, northing, if you will. But if I needed to label this with text and put in the longitude latitude, how would I do that? Well, I have that information. It's assigned to the cell. It's not extracting it from the coordinates. It's actually data that was added to it. I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to zoom in and now I'm going to label this. So I'm going to go to my space bar on my pop-up menu. I customized this and here I've added in place note. I'm going to click on place note. On the place note or text editor dialog, there's a little yellow star here. I created a favorite here that extracts out that information. Now, if I go to my manage You'll see here, this is local in my file. There's my Latin long. And what I've done was I extracted out that information and used field type down here to extract it out. So now there's field D and there's field E. So that's how I was able to do this. I'm going to choose that favorite. Now I'm going to snap to one of the elements there. And you can see as I move my cursor out, I'm now labeling that. Again, this is not extracting this as a coordinate. It's extracting it as data that was added to that cell. So this is a way for you to use the import points VBA to place a cell with text visible and not visible. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you, and see you next time.